So we got snowed out last winter and now we're back and it's spring. So thank you to all our subscribers who stuck with us through this process. It's a lengthy process. We've got water now in the spring so we're living comfortably and the work continues. As we got up here we saw that the water had risen quite a bit and this is the area where the original weir was placed and uh, you can see it's going around the weir quite strong and it's quite a bit of flow and uh, you can't even see the weir at this point. And we removed this uh, walkway because we were afraid it was going to get washed away, the water kept rising, but we've still got this log to cross the creek. And when we went up to see the pipeline where we were doing the intake, we realized that the water was rising to the degree where it was undermining what we had installed last year. The water was still rising. We had planned to put the pipe in here, collect the water here, and run it down to here, put it in the pipe. The area of the meadow where the water is designed to settle out is doing quite well and the water is slowly going through here and the weir is still in really good condition. It's weathered the winter quite well. So with the water continuing to rise from the snow melt, we decided to stop work on the pipeline and start work on the transmission wire that runs to the house. We dug a trench from the road over to the powerhouse and it required us to put in conduit for the electrical wire to go through. The uh, rocks were very thick and also we've got water in the trench so we wanted to protect the wire by putting it in a conduit from the road to the powerhouse. Here we're preparing to pull both the transmission wire and the control wires through the conduit with the lead rope by lubricating the wire and pushing and pulling it all the 300 feet over to the powerhouse. Once there we connected the wires together on one end so that from the other end we could test the continuity of the wires. When you connect two sets or two wires to, together you can test from one end and see that the continuity is fine on that set and when you test on the other set you see that there is no shorting taking place in those wires and the continuity of the other set is fine as well so that proves that the transmission wire goes through fine. If you look at the last four digits on the wire you can subtract one from the other and we've got about 1100 feet of wire here you can tell. That's a nice way to measure it. We created quite a mess digging all this up but uh, we reburied the conduit with the wire in it having checked the continuity and it was fine. And as you can see we've created quite a mess but we'll reseed all of this and it will grow back over time. And it's just the construction process. At the house we decided to start trenching with a trencher there and uh, the process was hopefully going to go a lot faster for us. And as we started to dig we found that uh, there was quite a bit of rock in the driveway and uh, as you dig it would jam and it made us a little fearful we might damage the equipment. It is heavy duty equipment, but not really designed to go through the rock. So uh, part way into it I realized I didn't know where the phone line was. You know where the phone line crosses across here? So until we got the phone company to come out and mark where our phone line was. We started digging with the trencher on the other side of the driveway and uh, it digs quite nicely. It was a little wet so when it's very wet the trencher tends to slip rather than dig. And um, We had the uh, 
phone company come in and show us exactly where the phone line goes from the road all the way down the driveway they came in and marked it so we knew exactly where it was all the way up to the house now that we knew where the wires were for the phone line uh, my contractor decided because of all the rocks on the ground it was probably going to go faster just to use the backhoe to dig along. So we dug along and tried to find the phone line, which we never did. And it rained out the first day, so we continued and just kept digging with the backhoe all the way down to the road. And eventually got there. It didn't take that long, actually. And so that's about 900 feet of trench from the house down to the road, maybe 800 feet. And it's important when you lay a transmission wire like this into the ground that you protect it and bed it properly. It is designed for direct burial, and this is gauge six wire, but uh, it's important that you get out and um, bed the wire by hand and make sure that it's covered and protected before you cover it up with the equipment. You don't want to damage the wire. So here we did a side trench to be able to run the wire out to where a greenhouse will eventually reside where the excess power can be routed to. And so now we have 1100 feet of wire going to the house with all our control wires and all we need to do is run that through the wall into the control room. This process took about four days to complete. It went pretty quickly and we got the pipe in the ground. We went up to take a look at what was going on with the pipeline. The water kept rising, of course. And when we got up there, we realized that the creek had risen to the degree where it had changed course completely and undermined our work from last year with the intake pipe. I uh, took all the work we did and sort of cast it off to the side and down the creek several hundred feet. Uh, just sort of tore it apart, threw it, threw it down the hill and raged on. Uh, so what we've got here is a situation where the water is out of control. Our plan is basically <laughs> undermined. And uh, where the water used to flow, it's no longer flowing, and it's created a whole new path. And in the process, chewed away the whole entire hill where the pipe had laid. And uh, we're going to have to redesign this whole thing up here. Uh, chewed away the roots, and we decided to remove what pipe was left, because we're going to lose that, and focus on creating a better bridge for ourselves to get across the creek. We took and uh, put a second log across the creek so it would be easy to walk. The waters kept rising too. And so we discovered that the choice to move the pipe was good because the creek basically took the hillside apart and knocked five or six trees over. Uh, the water's still rising here. And up the hill, you can see that the hillside is actually falling apart and sloughing off into the creek. Um, it's just rampaging. This is something we expected, but not to this degree. Uh, you can see that the water is just out of control and uh, doing what it wants to do, which is go downhill. So that's water power for you. You can't control it. And the sound you hear is boulders going underneath water. And this is our bridge. We're fearful we might lose it too. We're here. You can't even see. It's here, but it's totally underwater. So we've got work to do.